morning, Boog. How are you? All good, buddy. Nice job of just kind of vamping there, even though I was waiting on you. Yeah, sorry. Boogaloosa. Getting back into the uh, into the second hour. What did you think of the Stan Van Gundy hire for the Pelicans? Yeah, I mean, Stan is – if you listen to Stan do uh, – analysis as far as games stan talks a lot of uh about playing playing at a tempo mm-hmm. uh he talked a lot about zion making sure zion gets in really really good shape running the offense through zion all those things sound really really good but once you get out on the on, on the basketball court it's going to be important to see how he, he implements those things i think stan will be fine i've always liked stan he's a no-nonsense guy very practical so i look forward to seeing him coach that team Midway point rookie of the year vote. Who you got, Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, probably, I mean, neither one of them are really winning. Um, I would probably go co, uh, co rookie of the year. Wow. Both of those guys are playing really, really well. I mean, like early on, it was probably going to be Clyde Edwards Alaire, yeah. to be honest. Like, he's probably been the most consistent um, and the most impactful. Uh, based on what Kansas City's doing and him rushing for, what, 160 last time we saw him on the national stage. So yeah. I, I think that vote is going to really, really be close coming down to the end. And uh, I think Clyde's in it. And obviously the quarterback's always going to be in every award. Fire take by Booger McFarlane there. Uh, just saying both when asked the question for an opinion. Great work by Boog. Uh, Mr. Booger, I should say. Uh, did you see TJ Finley call you Mr. Booger in response to your tweet about him? Well, I mean, he, you can tell he was raised well. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Any, okay. Any, yes, sir. Anytime, anytime someone will say yes or no, sir, Mr. and Mrs., that just, that's a direct reflection on their parents. Does that mean that the cannon's a failure if he produced me? Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say <laughs> comment on that, show, maybe off the air. Uh, Boog, but I, I do want you to dive into your thoughts on Finley because it, it seemed like from Twitter that you were very impressed with the young man on Saturday. Well, here's what I'll say, guys. I remember when I was 17 years old, and the very first game of my career, we were at College Station against Texas a and And I was a 17-year-old freshman, five months out of high school, playing um, in, in the first game of my career. And I looked across the line of scrimmage, and there was Leland McElroy. And Leland was a senior. Calvin Collins was the center. He was a senior. So I'm 17 playing against 20, 21-year-old guys. I know what that's like. And so you put him in that situation. And I know he's been on campus a little longer than that. But to go through the pandemic, to go through all these different things, and to come out in your first career start, uh, and, and, and the moment wasn't too big for him. Like, that's what you always look for when you look for look at things and how do you identify whether or not a guy can play. I first look to see if a guy's nervous. Is he, is he jittery? Is he, is he making the mistakes? Is he wide-eyed? And I didn't see any of that from T.J. Finley. And for him to go out there in that game in a must-win situation for LSU – with South Carolina having all the momentum of play, playing Florida tough and so some, of the, uh, some of the games that they played, yep. to come to, for him to go out there and really only make one bad throw, I thought it was outstanding, and, and, and I think you couldn't ask for anything better from him. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jordan, you have anything on LSU before we go, uh, Danville? How do you handle that, Book? What, what, what do you do from a coaching standpoint to, to know that you've got the luxury of somebody like him who can play like that, that calm, and you've got a quarterback that has an injury – that he'll never really get over. It's always it's only going to be about pain management. What do you do in in just managing that position? Well, I think if you're Ed, you first got to go talk to the doctors and talk to Jack Marucci and say, okay, are we putting Miles Brennan in any danger by planning? So you first got to figure out the health of Miles Brennan, and once he's healthy, guys, that's why they pay Ed all this money. Like mm-hmm. you got to make that decision. Okay, they're not paying you five or six million bucks just just to go over there and clap and put the mask on like they're paying them a lot of money to make tough decisions. And so first, you got to deal with the health of Brennan. If and when Brennan is healthy, then that's a decision. That's a six million dollar decision. That's why Nick Saban makes those Nick makes that nine million dollars. That's why Dabo makes nine million dollars. You got to make those decisions based on what you see every day, based on your team. And people are either applauded or they're vilified for those decisions. And, uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, when Miles Brennan is healthy, Ed's got to make that call. I can't make it. Like, I'm not in the building. Nobody's in that building. you got to be in that building. you got to know the pulse of your team. you got to know the, the vibe of those guys. you got to look those guys in the, air, in the eye and figure out what's best for your team. Because LSU's 2-2. Two and two. 
They're going to Auburn, and Auburn wants to beat the hell out of LSU. Yeah. So Ed's got to figure out which quarterback, if both are healthy, because if Miles Brandon's not healthy, it's, it's not a question. Yeah. But if both if both are healthy, he's got to make that decision, and ultimately that's why you pay the guy like that five or six million dollars. ESPN Booger, Booger McFarlane. Uh, Boog, you, you're probably feeling pretty fat and cocky right now. Uh, you've been, About what? You've been singing the praises of Tampa Bay all year long. A little rough out the gates, but uh, the Bucks look pretty damn strong. And now they're about to add Antonio Brown uh, to the mix. Are they? Do you think they're the best team in the NFC? Huh. Well, the first NFL. of all, when, when, when somebody feels good, it doesn't always have to be a reflection of you in where you say <laughs> fat and cocky, okay? <laughs> you could say – you could you, – you, I mean, you easily could have said, Boog, you got to be feeling warm and fuzzy. Like, I, I would have taken that better than fat and cocky. Now, moving forward – I've been telling you guys all along, Tampa Bay is really, really good, and it's not because of Brady and the offense. It's because of their defense. Their defense is as good as anyone, and they lose Vita Vea. They go out and trade for Steve McClendon. Uh, McClendon can play. He made, what, four or five solo tackles against Vegas. So yeah. you, you've kind of plugged that hole a little bit. Antonio Brown gives them a luxury. So let's go into the weeds a little bit and talk some really nerdy football. You got Godwin and you got Mike Evans. You got Gronkowski. Now you have a guy who is a matchup nightmare in the middle of the field because here's what happens. In the middle of the field, you cover the middle of the field either with slot corners, safeties, or linebackers, and none of those guys can match up with Antonio Brown's quickness. And and, and if you say, okay, I'm going to put my best corner inside, well, guess what? Who's covering Mike Evans? Mm. Prime example, when the Buccaneers play the Saints and Antonio Brown's out there, if if the Saints say we're going to go man-to-man, are you putting P.J. Williams on Antonio Brown? Are you going to move Lattimore in? Are you going to move Lattimore inside on Brown? If so, who's covering Godwin? Who's covering Evans? So it, it becomes a matchup nightmare when they go 11 personnel, which is one back, one tight end, three wide receivers. And if you say we're going to play man-to-man, who in the hell is covering Antonio Brown? Because I got news for you. Mike Evans is a matchup nightmare. Godwin is a, a, a top-10 receiver. Antonio Brown, he hadn't played in 18 months, so we don't know what he is. But at his peak, he is a, a top five receiver in the league. Yeah, so sure. I'll ask you guys this. If the Bucks go three wide, who's covering Antonio Brown man-to-man in the slot? Because if, if if you tell me P.J. Williams, I'm going to hang the phone up. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you're, you're, the point stands. It's, it's a point well made. Um, Saints are going to kick the Bucks' ass, though. Get ready for it, book. More, uh, more scary closing speed. DK Metcalf or Devin White? Huh. Did you see well, the play Devin uh, White made on David Carr? Yeah, Devin White is 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 fast for a, a linebacker. He's two forty, runs runs four four. DK Metcalf, I mean, that's four two four three type stuff Oof. at two twenty five. Like. DK Metcalf reminds me of myself if I was 225. <laughs> I'm just like, listen. He also hey, reminds me of myself if I was 225. No, 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 seriously. It's so funny. At, I was thinking the same thing. No, well, I was. At, 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 at 305, I ran 4.5. So, T-Bob, if That's you just true. do Damn. the math, if, if you shave off 80 pounds, yeah, I probably. I mean, I could run four three ish. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's fair. That's that fair. I mean, I, you're four five. You ran a four five at three oh five. I feel like that number's growing in the telling a little bit. As Derek Panamski, he yeah, clocked Panamski, it. Panamski always says it. Um, he's got a fast timer. More, he's, known, more, he's known for that. More impressive. Uh, well, how impressive was Arizona though? Well, I mean, I know that everybody's talking about the Metcalf play, and, and Seattle goes into Arizona unbeaten, but the Cardinals get the win. Yeah. Um, you know, small ball or small guy football started to win a little bit, right? I mean, Kyler Murray, they say he's six foot. If he's six foot, I'm six eight because yeah. he's only about 5'10". Yeah. But what he can do with his leg is phenomenal. And he does just enough to keep the defense on their heels. And then he made some big-time throws in that game. That's a big win, not only for the small guy crowd, but for also the, the, the college coach crowd, the guy that's coming from college like a Cliff Kingsbury, implementing this. This, this air raid offense, uh, a lot of people doubted the offense. I was one of them. And I'm starting to come around that this offense can work a little bit. And you, you got to give Arizona um, a lot of credit for what they've done and how they've kind of built the offense up. In year two, Arizona's 5-2, and two, and that's a huge win against Seattle, who we thought was probably, if not the best team, a top three team in the NFC. Sure. 
Speaking of big wins, Boog, uh, before we let you go, i got to ask you about the one in the AFC, right? Uh, Steelers, Titans, um, undefeated teams meet up this late in the season is very rare. And it was a bit of a tale of two halves. So, so how do you, like, are you more impressed with that Steeler dominance to begin with, how the Titans fought back? What's your interpretation of how that game played out? Well, it's pro football, so there are no moral – um, victories in, 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 in football. You know, you either win or you lose. Mm-hmm. And I think when you look at what happened with with Pittsburgh, I'm going to make a statement for you, T-Bob, and, and, and this is going into your, your heroes game uh, with, with Pittsburgh versus Baltimore. Yep. I'm going to make a statement just for you. I think Pittsburgh's the best team in the NFL. Damn. And they didn't do anything on Sunday to change my mind. Yeah, Tennessee fought back. Okay, great. whoop de do. You still took the L. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, if 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 he stays healthy, with the emergence of Claypool, uh, with Deontay Johnson, um, Juju Smith-Schuster, Eric Ebron, they can run the football with Connor and Snell. Defensively, they got two guys that can close the game and do pre and watch. Uh, you know this this dude uh, Spillane at linebacker number forty one reminded me of the Boz, and then Latimer on the program like he he coming in there and just knocking people out. I think they're the best team in football, and I can't wait until they get a hold of your hero, Lamar Jackson, this Sunday. Wow. This is where he proves that he's elite, Boog. This Sunday, Lamar's going to prove he's elite. If Pittsburgh beats Baltimore, I want you to shave the number 92 in your chest. That's what I want. I don't know if my – I just do it in the beard. One hey, side whoa, nine, whoa, one whoa. side two. What about my lower back hair? No, 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 no. I, no. <laughs> I, I want you to shave 92 in your chest, and then you can take your shirt off and take a picture. Jordy, you saying something about hair being gross, given your Italian situation, is rich. So let's relax over there, okay? Glass houses. Book, book have a great week. <laughs> hey, man, you, you guys have a good one. See, Bob, next week I want an update on the diet, see where we are, and, you know, we can let the audience know how much progress we've made. Book, I'll say this. I'll say this. New 30-minute Peloton PR. I finally broke 400 in a 30-minute workout. That's great. Have you finally broken 320, though? Uh, No, no, no. I don't focus on weight, right? I mean, muscle weighs more than fat. We all know this. <laughs> Later. Later. Booger McFarlane yeah, every week brought to you by Central Plumbing Company.